Uh, we're traveling with my son. I'm going to have him stand with me. But Boston is his Indian name. My brother is Indian name, Sidney Kanum. Uh, uh, our videographer is Fred Lane. Uh, he's here someplace. Oh, there he is. Uh, Fred produced a copy of last year's journey. He took hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of video and he condensed it down to 66 minutes. And there are some really fantastic uh, visuals and speeches in it. I asked him to take the speeches out and put them out on Facebook or YouTube because they should be shared more broadly. But he's a great videographer and we want to thank Brett. He's going to be uh, traveling with us again and he'll do this again. He did this before. Uh, he produced a video for us when we were doing the 9-11 totem poles that went back to D uh, Pennsylvania, New York, and also Washington, D.C. And I think he's traveled with us uh, eight, seven times now. Uh, he takes the photos, he takes the notes. But we also have um, uh, Emerson Gorman. Here's, uh, he's our Okay, he's our spiritual protector here. I'm a member of the Native American Church along with my mate, and Emerson's our road man and our a very spiritual man from the National uh, Navajo Nation, Diné. And he travels up and down the continents into Canada and the United States uh, doing traditional ceremonies. Uh, Dr. Russo is here someplace. I worked with Dr. Russo for uh, 37 years, I believe. Uh, uh, Heidi, he's always kind of in the background, but uh, you know he's a uh, he's a strategist. Yeah, he's a coordinator, and uh, we always say he's also our scapegoat when we have nobody else to blame. <laughs> but uh, he's always there. He, he does grant writing. He does fundraising, and we we've, we've worked all around the world fighting for environmental uh, rights of indigenous peoples. Sometimes I'd get home and he'd say, the chairman's sending you to the United Nations. I said, I just got home. Well, we already packed for you. Here's your ticket. Or the chairman's sending you to Australia. We already packed for you. Here's your ticket. You know, and uh, I'm not sure if the chairman really did that, but I did go to those places, believing him. You know, but uh, the thing is, is that uh, I really appreciate Fawn and her international work. There's a lot of uh, to be uh, done in regards to indigenous people's voices. I was really proud to be a participant in the work of the United Nations uh, Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Uh, I offered the original paper that we had the Indian Law Resource Center translated into what I say, legalese, uh, so, so that the president can rationalize legally as to why uh, he should accept the UN Declaration of Rights of Indigenous Peoples as an obligation of the United States. Now, both Canada and the United States and New Zealand, uh, Australia and New Zealand have come on board. They're Johnny come lately, but they did come on board. And inside that uh, declaration it talks about our rights to be sovereign nation, people with our own culture, our own traditions, our own language, our own sense of family and place, and our rights to protect these sacred places. Now, for us up at Cherry Point, they're going to put a. Um, a, uh, a, a coal park right on top of our ancient village. It, it was th it's 3,500 years old. The, the State Historic Preservation Office says it's probably one of the largest uh, Indian burial grounds in the state. You know, and so uh, we're, we, of course, uh, working with the Lummi Nation for the Lummi Nation, uh, said, no, it's never going to happen. It's not going to happen because you're going to destroy the upland, you're going to destroy the water, you're going to impact all the surrounding communities, the coal's full of arsenic and mercury. And then we, as we looked into the question, because we were charged to uh, take that position and advocate on behalf of the Lummi Nation, we heard about Longview, that they're going to come to Longview and do the same thing. And they're going to try to do the same thing at the Port of Morrow. And we said, no, we can't, that can't happen. We're really proud because Fawn is the president of Affiliated Tribe of Northwest Indians. That's for Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Montana, Northern California, and Southeast Alaska. And the tribe did say no. And we're not saying we're against Crow Nation. We're just against the coal coming through our territory because of the poison that's in it. And it's a part of the contribution to global warming. They burn in China. Six days later, it's acid rain on your children's head. It's falling on your garden and your lawn. You know, so we can't have that.
just north of us, we've uh, met with a Tsleil-Waututh. Now, my brother, my son, and I, we have family on that side of the Canadian border. That's one of the things the Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People says. We can go there. We can have those relationships. At one time, we were so oppressed that we are afraid to go over those borders. But they're saying we can reunite. And so when we go up there and talk to the Tsleil-Waututh and the people up and down the Fraser River, those are our relatives. And they're saying no to the tar sands oil coming down through the Kendra Morgan pipeline. And they said, absolutely not, because it's going to kill the Fraser River. That's going to blaze in the Salish Sea, and we, they can't have that. And so during that time... Well, we're, uh, you know, we said, well, what do you want to do? We need to get media attention. So we did a, a totem pole a journey to Tsleil-Waututh and raised the pole in 2013, but it got a lot of media attention. And the message was not just the media. It's about the interfaith community taking action. You know, now, you heard the brother here, Roy, say he remembers back to 1987 when the churches uh, issued the apology. Well, that's a, a work of Dr. Kurt Russo and myself. And what happened is that we went into uh, South Africa and Chernobyl, uh, what would be Chernobyl 2 blew. And the, it seemed like the earth went silent, but I know I got really upset. That's unacceptable. What do you mean you're not paying attention to it? You know, we went to Europe, there were dead rivers. It was crystal clear because everything was dead in it. Absolutely never drink it, swim in it, don't touch anything. The signs are up and down the river. Poison. There was black snow on the Swiss Alps. There was acid rain. And I was upset because we had leaders like Billy Frank saying, stop this madness. You know, when he was standing up. And uh, there was a book called Wisdom Keepers, and I read that. And it was, these Indian elders were saying for 500 years, don't you hear us? This is a creation. This is a gift. Protect the earth as if it's your mother. What are you doing? Stop it! And nobody was hearing them. I told my uh, colleague, Kurt Russo, I said, we, we can't trust the Christian community. We can't trust the churches. What we were offering them is come, come, be our friend. Instead, what they did is they said, you can't pray, you can't worship, you can't do what you have done for thousands of years. You have to convert. We can't tolerate your difference. You know, and you came here because of intolerance. And then you, then you couldn't tolerate us because we prayed different. And so we're saying that's unacceptable. And so it led to the apology of churches because we're concerned about the earth. We're concerned about let's acknowledge the difference and the damage and move forward. And so the uh, apology came out in 1987. And, of course, I didn't trust you, so I entered it into the Senate record. Just in, <laughs> so just in case you don't take action. You know, we can call you on it. But the thing was is that the ten bishops that signed that have continued to sign it. But 2000, they renewed it in 80, uh, 1997, 2007. But the Catholic Church didn't sign on. So I was proud when Pope Francis came out. We're calling on them to sign it. But more importantly, take action. The world's dying around us. How are you going to change? We need every sermon. Every sermon to sound like what the pastor just read. Every sermon should be talking about this is God's this is God's gift to us and the gift to your children from gener seven generations away. So, when we heard uh, from uh, Reuben George, the uh, grandson of the late Chief Dan George, he told us, I was talking to his mother, Amy, she's an elder up there, she goes, I went up to uh, Fever Lake Cree, the people up there are dying from cancer. They can't drink their water, they can't eat the fish. They can't eat the animals anymore because they all have cancer tumors on them. And if they eat them, they die, but they have nothing else to eat. So they eat them, and they're dying. And out of the two sisters that were speaking out, one got thrown from a 33rd floor and murdered. Nothing happens, right? And so Amy was saying, these sisters live in fear. These people live in fear. And the corporations in there are saying, it's okay. It's okay. What can we do for you? You know, and it looks like they nuclear bombed the area. There's nothing left. But it's a holocaust. It really is. It's an environmental holocaust. But this thing has been going on for decades. Our brother there, Emerson, lives at Navajo Nation. It's been declared a national sacrifice zone since the 1970s. Oh, we're only doing it to the Navajo. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You know, my brother is an Indian named Sutki Kane, and my Indian name is Sasiyah. It means younger than Seattle. 
You know, and I like Chief Seattle's speech where he says, tribe follows tribe, nation follows nation like waves of the sea, for that is the nature of things. We shall wait and see. We may be brothers after all. Oh. We're at that point. We can't look. we got to look past. The difference is and find the commonality. That's what Paul is saying. We have too much in common. And right now, it's the risk that we are facing of what we're going to leave to our children. And so, we are uh, we brought a poll last year up to uh, Beaver Lake Creek because they said nobody will pay attention to us. We need a voice out there. So we brought one up there. You know, and it brought attention to them. You know, and... Uh, we're going to continue to work with them, you know, try to get that attention. And so even their own council said, stop, well, let us rethink this. Because they're being sort of persuaded by the corporations, and they switched back to their original position. They shifted their council, so they're going to continue to try to fight for the environment. So that's the north end of the pipeline. So the label tooth at the uh, south end, but then there's the Yankton Sioux. We went to the Yankton Sioux last year and came up to Sioux territory because Keystone Pipeline is going to go right down and destroy the Ogallala Aquifer. And it's going to destroy every stream, every creek, and every river in between. You know, and as we came home, the people were saying, the Missouri River's dying. The Columbia River's dying. The Fraser River's dying. The Athabasian River's dying. <coughs> And it's happening in our lifetime. This isn't science fiction. This is a reality. And so how can you not want to cry? How can you not want to grieve? I know when that uh, silver mine blew last year up in the Fraser, I had to pull over and cry. I was so upset. Their scientists knew it wouldn't hold it back. They knew it. That's why they're the scientists. They knew it. It's just cheaper to let it blast its way out. They disposed of it. You know, and this is the type of stuff that we have to deal with. We don't even know what's going on with Fukushima. No. We don't even know how much it's already killed our Pacific coast. And it's happening over and over again. Fracking, as we know, is insane. They're saying they can crack an egg perfectly around, right around the middle. You know, that's insane. You know it can't happen. They know it can't happen. And so we're just saying that. Thanks to, like, Quinault Nation, they're sp helping buy our gas and sponsoring us. Swinomish Nation, that's our another national leader that Fawn works with, Brian Cladisby from the Swinomish Nation. He's the president of the National Congress of American Indians. He knows. He's trying. He's working really hard to save the Salish Sea. Fawn's working really hard to so uh, save the shores of our Pacific Ocean. You know, we do have people out there, and they're activists, they're leaders, and they're setting the example. And so we're asking, how can we pull people together? How can we pull them together? How will they know the story of the people at Otter Creek? You know, the, Otter, the people the Northern Cheyenne said, you know, you want the Yankton Sioux, you want to Beaver Lake Cree, you want to Salewa too, you're talking about Lummi, you ask us for prayers, but, you know, how about us too? And so we said, yes, how about you? Let's do something. And so we carved this totem pole, and these are their symbols because they want to, uh, talk about what's important to them. 